in Jeff Davis County, Georgia, a high school senior, a couple of weeks before her graduation, disappears from her car on her way home from a party. Her car had been found, the car was running, the door was open, but there was no Rhonda. She would not have ever pulled over if she didn't know who that was behind her. I started looking for emails, anything like that, that mentioned Rhonda's name or Rhonda's case. And what I got back completely blew my mind. Born in 1972 in Hazelhurst, Georgia, Rhonda Sue Coleman is the only child of Gail and Milton. Loved by friends and family, Rhonda is known for her bubbly personality. She loved to meet people, talk to people. If you came by and said, hi, Rhonda, how are you? You, you better be ready for a conversation. And growing up in Hazelhurst, I think she had a wonderful childhood. She loved the outdoors. She loved horseback riding. She rode motorcycles. She was just outgoing, outspoken, just a loving person. She infected people with her happiness and with her love that she had for life. In May 1990, Rhonda is eager to graduate high school while getting ready to start at Georgia Southern University in the fall. She was very excited and she wanted to be a nurse to work in the nursery with the babies. Rhonda would have made a perfect nurse. She was compassionate. Thursday, May 17th, Rhonda gets ready for a night out with her senior classmates. We didn't approve of her going out on school nights, but that night was gonna be special. She went to a flag painting party, which was something that the outgoing senior class did every year. It was a rite of passage. We told her what time to be home, and we knew she would be home. She was supposed to be home at 10.30. We had a curfew. Something happened, you can't be home by that time. Pick up the phone, call me. She always did it. We hugged and kissed. She said, I love you. And I watched her as she walked to the back door, and I was looking at that blonde hair and how she had it fixed. I said, Daddy, I love you, and I said, I love you, baby. She left, and that was the last time we saw her. Rhonda leaves the party at 10 p.m. Friends drop her off at the Sewanee Swifty convenience store where she'd left her car. Well, I woke up at 11, 20 or 25, and she wasn't home, and I said, this ain't like her. If there was something that came up or she was gonna be five, 10 minutes late, she would call. Her dad got up and said, I'm gonna go look for her. I knew something was wrong. God, I knew in my heart something was wrong. A friend of Rhonda's driving along Bell Telephone Road sees Rhonda's car pulled over. Lights on, engine running, door open. And as she passes, she gets a closer look and realizes that that's Rhonda's car. So she pulls over and she searches around the area of Rhonda's car and she's nowhere. Rhonda's friend calls the police and 30 minutes later, the sheriff and a deputy arrive at the scene. And I pulled up right behind them because I seen the blue lights and I seen her car. The deputy was walking up to the car and there were three sets of footprints. The deputy's footprints, Layla's footprints, and Rhonda's footprints where she walked away from the vehicle. Rhonda's footprints stop beside another set of tire tracks and then disappear. But this vital evidence is jeopardized by the crush of responders. When I arrived, there were probably 15 or 20 people walking on the dirt road near where Rhonda's car was. So they were right by where footprints would have been. And I thought that was kind of bad to uh, have compromised the crime scene at that point from a missing person. Sheriff Mark Hall came to me and told me to get out of his crime scene. Despite the chaos, the clues raised some clear questions. Why did Rhonda stop her car? Did someone pull her over? And did she drive off with that person? There was no sign of a struggle. 
She would not have ever pulled over like that and stopped if she didn't know who that was behind her or it had a blue light on it. Immediately, Rhonda's family and investigators turned their attention to Rhonda's ex-boyfriend, Greg. He and Rhonda had been broke up for a while. He had just got so possessive of her. He didn't want her hanging out with her friends. One time he had told her not to wear her bikini out there at the pool at our home around her daddy. It got to the point where Milton had to tell him, stop harassing her, quit calling her. At about one in the morning, the night of her disappearance, Rhonda's father, Milton, and one of the deputies went to that ex-boyfriend's house. Rhonda's ex-boyfriend, Greg, he didn't come to the door. His mother answered and said he had to get up for work in the morning and she wasn't gonna wake him. First thing the next morning, Greg goes to Rhonda's parents' house. He's quiet and says he has no idea where Rhonda is. Friends and family are now engaged in a desperate hunt. They searched this county from one end to the other. Every little dirt road up in the woods, everywhere. There was a great response from the community. There were volunteers that rode everywhere looking for Rhonda. There was aerial search. There were canines. As hours turn into days, the hope of finding Rhonda alive begins to dim. Statistics show if they're not found within 48 hours, usually they're not found alive. On day three of the hunt for Rhonda Sue Coleman, there's news no parent ever wants to hear. The sheriff come up and told me she had been found and she was gone. And I just about passed out, lost it. Your life goes away. Rhonda's body is found 15 miles away in neighboring Montgomery County in a wooded area, some of which has recently been clear cut. She was wearing the same clothes that she had been when she disappeared and had been there apparently for three days. From what investigators can piece together, she was strangled and then she was set on fire. The fire was concentrated around her head and her hands. I think that somebody was trying to destroy any kind of evidence. I thought it very strange that Rhonda's remains were located where they were actually located. And it's not a place that a person that doesn't know the area would go. If she'd have lost her life in a vehicle accident or she got something wrong with her, we could have understood it. It was very painful to have to bury your own daughter, especially under these circumstances. We thought two or three days, they would have arrested somebody. You was like, okay, well, it won't be long, but we'll get answers. We'll find out who did this to Rhonda. A tangled mix of law enforcement agencies, police from Rhonda's hometown of Hazelhurst, deputies from Montgomery County, where her body was found, and the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, are all looking for answers. But it's Mark Hall, the sheriff of Jeff Davis County, where Rhonda's car was found, who insists on controlling the investigation. Normally, a homicide case is worked from the location where you discover the body. So it was very strange that the uh, criminal investigation was brought back to Jeff Davis County. 